Hello, and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week's topic is transcending the new age into the new paradigm, moving into that high fourth dimensional new paradigm that we are collectively co-creating, that new expression of life on this planet. Now, when I speak of new paradigm and the high fourth dimensional expression of Gaia, I'm not speaking of new earth. Now, in my realm, new earth is that higher fifth, sixth dimensional consciousness and that fifth, sixth dimensional expression of Gaia that already exists. She already made the split a year ago, a year ago this week. And I'm not I'm not when I speak of new paradigm, new paradigm is that that fourth dimensional expression that humanity gets to play with for a while until eventually we learn the lessons and enough people have stepped into uh the their higher consciousness state so that we can then merge with Gaia's fifth dimensional expression. And that's just and that's just my point of view, and that's just where where I'm working from because I still feel very strongly that there's going to be opportunities and possibilities in what I what I'm referring to as as the gateway that's from fall equinox to spring equinox uh, for people who are ready, willing, and able to embrace and activate the crystalline Christ unity consciousness into their being and are able to step into that new expression of Gaia, be completely healed and activated and transformed, and then come back and assist as humanity goes through this this new paradigm transformation. Now, when it comes to new age... I do want to make the the distinction that new age uh in in my point of view is kind of old age now and I know I've been saying that for a couple of years and here's why a lot of the modalities and the meth- uh, the methods and the teachings and healings that we've been working with since the 60s are kind of stuck right now and there's a few reasons why they're stuck and I'll I'll get into that but we need to take a look at a few areas and I'd like to address them one by one the first is modalities versus going direct we have to find new ways to make lasting healing kind of maintain a permanent state of unity and crystalline consciousness it's it's fine to go to a, a healer, and there are many very good healers on the planet right now. But we want to make sure that we're not just going and and getting a, a treatment or a modality or having a session with someone that provides um, a temporary state of feeling good but you haven't actually learned how to activate that state permanently or you're not leading to learning how to activate that state permanently, that you're actually dependent upon going back to that same healer over and over again and it doesn't create a lasting state. That new age, old age uh, way of thinking it's really not helpful when it comes to empowering an entire awakened collective. So we're moving into the the new paradigm teaching healings, which actually teach and empower people to do this themselves. And there's a there's a couple of hang ups in the in the New Age community with teaching people how to do it themselves. First of all, the healer has invested a lot of money in learning from somebody else who activated them and taught them, took the course, etc. However, 
with um, with many of the new age modalities, all you need to do is take a course. So it's like literally, you spend you know a couple thousand dollars, and you get activated, or you get a weekend's worth of information, or a week, or you know a couple courses. And often they're divided into different levels. So you've got level one, level two, level three, and you kind of graduate from that. And everybody kind of gets the same <laughs> diploma, the the same certification, and then it's up to the individual what they want to do with it. Now, because there is an investment made and because the modalities actually did work for a while and continue to to provide a temporary state of feeling good, uh, they're still working for a large part of the population. And there's nothing wrong with that. Certainly the teacher healer wants to um, maintain their business, and it is a business, and there's nothing wrong with providing a service. So whatever polarity you're experiencing about the term business and and maintaining fees, et cetera, for services, um, you're going to have to get over that because we're still still dealing with the Orion money system and that survival level of, well, I want to get my investment back because I spent thousands of dollars learning this healing and now I have a space that I have to provide and I have to do marketing and I have to provide the service and what about my time, et cetera, et cetera. They are assisting people, definitely, but when it comes to unification and unifying and moving ahead with a lot of these modalities, um, it's it's not happening, or rather it's not happening with a huge part of the healer community. And yes, there's there's the money issue. There's a, definitely a, a shortage of, of clients when it comes to New Age modalities. Not a people, not a lot of people know about it when you go to a, a larger community. And second of all, uh, there's there's all these other factors of, of space and marketing and maintenance and taxes and fees and all this all this kind of stuff and anything that you have to maintain in order to get your your keep your certification going. There's a lot of money involved. And when it comes to money, a lot of people really have issues with, well, if I have a, a good client base and I'm getting by, that's good enough. And there, there's no progress there outside of maybe inviting in when things get tough, a couple of other healers doing the exact same thing and you all kind of share the costs of the space, but you're still doing the same thing, still providing the same service. So when it comes to new paradigm, there's definitely some uh, progress needed in the New Age communities to step into alchemy and to apply and integrate these modalities that worked in the past into people's daily lives and changing what supports us from moment to moment what supports the new state of consciousness, the new paradigm that we want to move into. And I'm I'm just saying that right now, unity is not high on the list of a lot of these modalities because unity means uh, it's, it's a threat. It's a threat to the, the business aspect of it. It's been hard enough to maintain these healings as we've been going through this paradigm shift, let alone... What do you do now that people are stepping into different levels of consciousness and the, that teacher or healer is kind of stuck in, well, this is what I've been doing, but I haven't really been exploring much outside of that because it's been all about survival. It was, <laughs> Panash Desai said something, wow, it was like a year ago, maybe a little bit longer than a year ago, uh, he was he was on an interview with um, with Maureen Moss on World Puja, and and she kind of called him on the carpet because he had thrown this out there in one of his broadcasts that modality should be put in a museum, and and Maureen who is who is very wise said wait 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 <laughs> get 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 your butt on the show let's talk about this, 
And because everybody was just like, what? You know, what about my business? What about how good I feel when I go to get a Reiki treatment? What about, you know, the chakras? He's saying we shouldn't focus on those, blah, blah, blah. So, so Panache, while he's, while he's taken a very different uh, direction um, with, with his own path, and, and again, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a weird area right now because even the, the teacher healers moving into new paradigm and empowerment are still very much in a business. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just as the surfaces change, um, they're, they're attracting different strata of the awakened community. Um, I, I don't uh, appreciate or resonate with um, Panache just kind of trashing pretty much everybody but him. Um, and I find that a, a very strong business plan, a very strong service plan. Um, but I do find it very true that even you know a year ago or more, uh, the whole idea of modality should be put in a museum. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Because it's not because they don't work. They do work on a certain level of consciousness, but it's because there is no progress. Because they're they're still clinging to a lot of old information and old knowledge that in a lot of ways doesn't apply. Well, not in a lot of ways. In all ways. Does not apply to where we're going. And as we start to focus on our true capabilities as divine humans and our true levels of service and our true mastery of everything that we are, it doesn't make sense to go to a a healer and get a temporary state of, oh, that felt pretty good, and then, you know, two days later, you're having a nervous breakdown because you you don't feel that way anymore and how come I can't maintain it and then you end up going back to the healer who was telling you that that's a side effect of the energy or, or whatever. So let's let's step out of that space altogether. So the modalities in a museum is is definitely wisdom. And even though um it doesn't make sense anymore to reinforce the past that outdated information or knowledge it still does create temporary states of comfort, but it seems like we should be teaching permanent empowered states of beingness at this point. Now the challenge with that is folks who have been trained over, especially the last few lifetimes, heavily trained to rely on the external for healing, the external for knowledge and wisdom, uh, just pay somebody to kind of take care of it mentality, um, it's very difficult to get a population that's dependent upon the external providing everything, your lifestyle, your social structure, your money, your government, your politics, your home, your choices, your shopping choices, your food choices, your religion choices, and now moving into you know, beyond new age or choices for how you're going to deal with the new paradigm, difficult to teach folks who have relied on the external for everything how to self-empower and activate the creative consciousness within them that sees way beyond all of those constructs, way beyond all of those structures, seeing the whole big, big, big perspective picture of the universe, interacting with the universe as opposed to interacting with the, this tight little finite microcosm of existence that we had for a long time. But we're stepping out of that, and a lot of people in a huge way. But the challenge for the new paradigm, way showers, and, and everyone's very sensitive about saying, teacher, leader, because, oh, there's not any teachers, there's no leaders. Okay, fine. Everybody's struggling on their own that needs a little direction. And people who have stepped into the skills and the knowledge and, and a few instructions, a few steps and, and structures that you can follow until you get it on your own, the, the new paradigm teacher, leader, way shower has to face that challenge of, wow, okay, all of a sudden I'm getting 
brand new information, brand new pure light intelligence coming in that does not look like anything that came before it. How do you find support for that? Because the 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 new age has done a lot of damage when it comes to uh well, I mean the, the, that movement has had its share of ineffective, manipulative, and stuck teachers healers. That's folks that stick to one dogma or modality for an entire lifetime. They they learn something or they get certified in something or they receive some information and then that is the truth for decades. That kind of men- mentality and those kind of modalities don't leave a lot of wiggle room for progress, for change. It's similar to religion. But that is the vibe that we were working in on this planet. We were working in that religion structure or that one modality that works for for me and now I'm going to teach it or that one way of thinking. We were working with that for a long time on this planet. Now that we have vast possibilities opening to us and our creative consciousness is awakening and expanding each moment, showing us more and more and more that there are no limitations or modalities that are Bible any longer. We get to create whatever we choose. And especially during this this upcoming gateway, which I'll talk about a little bit later, we're going to have the opportunity to see exactly what that looks like. So when it comes to kind of transcending this New Age way of thinking where people are a little damaged by not only the the new age but by the by the old medical system as well a way of treating things that have nothing to do with uh uh progress that have nothing to do with this new consciousness that we're moving into did it used to work sure did it used to do damage sure where there are a lot of new age folks and continue to be a lot of new age folks that are are a little bit clueless about what's coming yeah, of course. And that's fine. All is well. Everybody gets to express exactly as they want to. It's how we deal with it. It's what we do with that information or that confrontation that is going to speed up the shift in consciousness so that we can all get to that beautiful endpoint of, of unity consciousness and merge with these higher expressions of Gaia if we choose. Now, no one knows, and I I really don't care who you are or how long you've been on the planet or how many incarnations you've had here or what star system you came from or what teacher you're following, no one is in charge of how long this expression of fourth dimension, fourth dimensional Earth, no one knows how long that is going to last except Gaia. And Gaia, as even the, the folks who channel Gaia, beautiful. But even Gaia is is waiting, <laughs> is, is, is waiting for cosmic triggers, cosmic decisions that are uh, kind of above and beyond her of how long she will be able to maintain that. She's a very loving entity, a very loving conscious entity, but when when push comes to shove and she has to make decisions that 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 moment will come of course will it be 100 years 200 years a thousand years as all of these old uh channels have said for decades and decades and i don't know how long that information has been around but um is it true we don't know is it all going to flip we don't know in the meantime, what are we doing? You know, there's no there's no waiting around. But when it comes to the new paradigm and allowing the new paradigm in, a lot of folks are damaged by the um the the work that was done in in the new age era, that era of uh, come to me and I'm going to teach you the truth. Come to me and I'm going to activate this, that, or the other thing. 
are there are there benefits to some of that? Sure. Depending on your journey, uh, there's you know as I explore some of the the newer New Age stuff that that crosses my path, um, it, it really is a very individual choice as to what you want to follow, if anything, or what you want to activate, trust, believe in um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the shift. Uh, ultimately, it would be great if everyone could open up their skills and, and activate their neutrality and discernment and see whether or not it's for your own path. Because when we come to this kind of splintering of the the awakened community and everyone realizing I get to create whatever I want and my timeline might not look like your timeline. And this this keeps presenting over and over, which is why I've talked about it for the last couple of weeks, because it's it's uh, the radio show is based on on exactly what is presenting right here and now. And I'll I'll share with you a a brief conversation um that happened up on Mount Shasta. So I was way atop Mount Shasta and crossed paths with the, a man who introduced himself as a guru, which uh, I found kind of odd because even the 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 gurus who have been called gurus for a, for a long time, um, you know, folks in, in in India and even even here in the states or or down in South America. They um, they said we're we're not calling ourselves gurus anymore. We're mo- moving into unity consciousness, and now I'm just going to be you know this this ten thousand syllable name or whatever. <laughs> the simplicity would be much appreciated, folks. But when it comes to uh, the the guru status, I was like, hmm, well that's interesting. Now I don't I don't have any judgment on where this this gentleman's path is is going. You know his journey is his journey. I respect everything he has going on. <laughs> However, when it comes to uh, introducing yourself as a guru, and then he's running workshops here in Shasta and started sharing with me um, some of his beliefs, uh, which he called teachings, we got into a conversation where he, um, we were talking about uh, light ships and I, I, I said, well, in 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 my realm, um, I, I try to encourage people to use their discernment and and stay with the planet and not get on any light ships, especially in like a, a collective rescue kind of thing. And he said, oh, well, I tell people definitely to get on the ships, absolutely get on the ships because there's going to be these three days of darkness and everyone's going to die on the planet and then we're going to come back, you know, that. And so immediately he was just regurgitating that kind of Sheldon Nidal, um, which is, uh, he's he's one of the the gentlemen who um, channel uh, that facet of Galactic Federation of Light that um, deals with uh, the, the rescue scenario, that there's going to be <clears throat> mass doom uh, on the planet and you have to get in the ships and that ascension occurs via a pod that looks just like your home and all, all this kind of thing. So so this, this guru was saying that, you know, the, the ships are going to land and you have to get on the ships because during the three days of darkness, anyone who's not on a ship uh, will die. So millions of people dying, animals, everything. And then he said, well, after the three days of of darkness, then the ships will will come back and we'll all get off the ships and we'll be back on the planet again. But it's going to take you off while it's dangerous. It's going to be too dangerous. And I've heard this before, too dangerous on the surface, so you have to go to inner earth, or too dangerous, so you have to get on the ships. And my, my first question after he kind of stated this this agenda that I've heard before uh, my first question was wow how long do you think it will take to clean up all of those dead bodies and dead animals when you come back 
and he just blinked at me. <laughs> he just he he had no response for that whatsoever because he hadn't even considered anything beyond the channel of we're going to take you off and everyone's going to die and then we will return you and then this this you know wonderful uh Eden will be restored but i don't think he had really thought about like the technicalities of of um coming back to a planet that's been completely wiped uh, that everyone has died and if <laughs> If everyone has has disappeared, if there is no cleanup of all these millions of people and animals and everything that have um, died in the three days of darkness, um, if if all those those animals and humans have actually disappeared, um, I'm I'm thinking that they that they ascended. I don't, I'm I'm thinking if they disappeared from that reality, um, what, what's going on? Unless the Earth is completely transformed into that fifth dimensional higher Eden type state when you return from the ship, um, what's going on there? So I don't know. So so he didn't have answers for my questions, of course. Um and and they were asked in a very open, honest way. And he he hadn't thought about that. You know, he hadn't thought beyond the the channeling of this is how it's gonna go down, shut up, get on the ship. It's gonna be too scary, get on the ship. It's going to be too dangerous. Everyone's going to die. Get on the ship. And when it comes to my journey and that whole idea of survival, um, and I presented this to him too. I'm like, well, if we're infinite consciousness and there are no limitations, um, I think my body should should stay with the planet. You know, that's her substance. So I'm I'm sticking with the planet, but that's just my body it's not my consciousness so the idea of taking my my body off planet in order to save it doesn't make sense to me at all um you know if if my body if if gaia decides to make a huge transformation during three days of darkness which when you think about it i mean just think about being in in darkness for three days even if that does occur and there's many different theories on what that means. You know, the the metaphor over and over again for all the, the, the sun gods who, you know, like the sun, die on, on, on the winter solstice. And then, you know, it's like the sun appears to come up in the same place for three days after the solstice. And then it rises again and starts moving. Um, it, even though that metaphor has been has been used over and over again with all of these different sun gods that died, they're dead for three days, and they come back. Died uh, in the tomb for three days, resurrected. The same metaphor that all the sun gods and Yeshua, probably the most popular one that people have heard about, that metaphor is us now. All the metaphors, it's just us. Now as a collective, as a collective humanity, we get to experience that. It may be in a very personal way, it may be in a very collective way, but when it comes to ascension, ascending your frequency, transforming yourself into a higher consciousness, the the three days of darkness may be some kind of weird particle bombardment that makes the sun appear dimmer as we go through the dark rift. It may be a very personal journey of a, a complete rewrite of your entire system in order to catch up and express with this higher dimensional expression of Gaia. It may be a collective three days of darkness, again, with the, the particles making the sun appear as if it's it's gone or dimmer or... Uh, I... I, I I still do not resonate with the idea of, of the, the sun being blocked out completely. I don't think that's what the metaphor is about. I think the metaphor of the sun, which it does at winter solstice, coming up in the same place, it seems like there's no progress. That, to me, feels like that wild zero-point state of being where you get the rewrite and then you get to progress 
into this resurrected, ascended state of being. Um, and I know a lot of channels have expressed that the three days of darkness you'll probably sleep right through and it'll be some weird funky time where you lose track of everything for three days. And who knows how we're going to experience linear, linear time after that. But if it is collective and if we are going through that, it's nothing to be frightened about. If everybody is in a state of of unconsciousness in order to in order to be transformed into a new state of consciousness and that's not everybody awakening after three days completely transformed into Christ consciousness I doubt very much that's going to happen but there does appear that there's going to be some kind of rewrite when you take a look at what what's occurring right now and all of the the metaphors that have been used for this period of time uh, it does appear that a, a a rewrite is happening. Will it affect everyone in the same way? Come on, How, haven't we learned that by now? This is you know this is kind of a, a slow crawl toward the shift in consciousness that a lot of the population has been made, and some people are not participating in that at all. So it, it's just an amplifier. It's a way of of rewriting so that enough folks who are resonating in a high enough frequency get the opportunity to continue on into the new paradigm and be more effective. And then the the, the DNA that is not capable of being re rewritten, just way too stuck in density, way too clogged up with, with emotions and beliefs and agreements um, that may not get the same upgrade. It may destroy some people, you know, and that's that's fine. It's just the body. It's not, you know, your mom, your dad, your dog, your it's that's just physical substance. That is not the pure essence of of, of consciousness that is inhabiting that physical form. And if you've been listening to the show for a while you get it already. So I don't want to like dumb it down for, for folks who are just catching up. But you can see that this rewrite is uh, is is headed our way? How it affects people completely up to you over and over again. And this is this is my point about transcending these these new age. Let's follow. Let's listen. Let's you know wait 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 because they're still very stuck in that finite way of being that is dependency and in a way codependency. You know, healers are, are just as dependent upon you visiting them as you are dependent upon the visit. So it and there's there's nothing wrong with going and getting a massage. There's nothing wrong with going and getting a Reiki treatment. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is the 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 real old age, new age stuff of like focusing on the seven chakras and focusing on, you know, this this modality is law, that, that kind of religious, cultish point of view about a lot of this stuff um, has to go. It has to go, you know, and it's being pulled apart right now because it's it's being revealed, you know. This is the whole masks off, Kachina. This is it. You know, you're looking at yourself. What are you doing? And when it comes to your own journey, it's time to go direct. It's time to go direct with your healing. It's time to learn. That doesn't mean take getting a Reiki attunement and, and following, following, following the Reiki path. You know, if you want to play with that, yeah, it's great. If you have the money, if you have the money to to throw in to uh, a couple weekends of, of activating Reiki or whatever, go ahead and feel it. It's it's wonderful. Um, if uh, if you want to throw money into uh, a new age program right now, um, I I would recommend doing um, the the reconnection as opposed to uh, Reiki at this point, um, simply because um, Eric Pearl's work with the reconnection, and I'm not endorsing him, but I'm saying that he's on he's on the right path, even though it's a very expensive program and very very lucrative for Eric, I'm sure. But um, but he deserves it because he's teaching people how to connect with the natural flow of the universe and how to connect with each other in order to heal. A 
cooperative process, and uh, and that is going direct. Still going to cost you some money. I'm sorry. That's just, we're still dealing with money. I mean, if if everyone still thinks that that everything is is going to be free, um, then then work on that. You know, if you want everything to be free, then work on figuring out or 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 supporting, providing a space and and all the the necessities uh, for for folks who are teaching and and, and teaching empowerment, um, go ahead and, and support that. You know, if you think everything should should be free when it comes to the ascension and the new paradigm, then work toward that because right now it is not. It's impossible. It would. It, it's great if if somebody is already independently wealthy. Or has a, a good support system, or whatever, then then uh, they are able to to give everything away, and it would be wonderful if we all could. If if you're if that's what's kind of stuck in your craw at this point, is uh, paying for things that that seem to be extremely valuable to this process, then work on that. Go ahead and make that your passion rather than your anger. Go ahead and make it your passion. Do something about it. Find space for people. Find a collective space. Invite people. Get them there. Say, I'm I'm going to support it. I'm going to find everything that you need. I'm going to find the, the web person, the marketing person, this, that, and the other thing. And we're all going to get together and make a, a center or two or three or figure out how to do that. Go ahead and do that. But don't sit around being angry that it's still – that services – Still, cost the the service provider money. That's this no. That's old paradigm. <laughs> you're, you're you're not helping. But as we transcend this this new age um, process of dependency and move into the new paradigm, the the challenge now is for the new paradigm way showers service providers uh, to survive pretty much this. Um, this window that we have between letting go of the the, the new age old paradigm way of, of thinking and moving into uh, permaculture, moving into uh, permanent states of consciousness, permanent states of higher healing alchemy, moving into providing these services for for everyone and enabling people to go ahead and go back to their community and be able to set up shop, be able to teach, lead, and and lead their own collective so that everybody can get on board. And that is, <clears throat> as someone who is, who is running a, a new paradigm service, extremely challenging. And I've seen that pop up a lot, even... Um, Bill Ballard was was talking about that in a video um, this week on YouTube. He was saying, you know, I am I like many other way showers am getting all of these instructions to start this, do this, do this, do this, and and myself included receiving all of this new mission, new mission change, new mission, and 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 just kind of throwing your hands up, going. I okay. I'm I'm trying, and I, I understand the urgency, and I understand the gateway is is a month away. But how do I do that? I have no support. There's no financial support. A lot of us have, you know, have weird living situations, or or just cannot find other people who are willing to kind of venture into the unknown with them and go. This this is what I'm being guided to do, and I. I don't know how to create that help. How do you do it? You know, how do you how do you get those people together? Because there's still um, there's still a huge part of the Awakened Collective that are just kind of waiting for for things to happen. And and what we end up with is a lot of uh, New Age folks um, that are able to create uh, events and workshops and gatherings and stuff like that that kind of stick to the old agenda of like this is what's familiar and we're going to sit around and we're going to you know we're going to listen to channels and then we're going to do an activation and then we're going to you know focus on our our seven chakra system and we're going to 
clear by welcoming in Archangel whoever or Ascended Master whoever, and we're just going to be dependent, dependent, dependent upon a schedule for a weekend that makes us feel good, and then you go home and you have no idea how to integrate any of that because you are not the master, you are not the channel, you are not the New Age person who invited you to do that. So then how how have you learned how to empower yourself at all? So but but right now the the challenge for the new paradigm entities is we do not have the the backing, the fun, the the enthusiasm that um the crowd still has for for that new age paradigm. So as as, as a way shower speaking to the other way showers um hang in there definitely you know i mean we we don't have a choice so of course we're going to hang in there you know i i was ready to to take everything down last last week i was just like okay i have to i have to cut something because all these new all this new mission stuff and and go ahead and spend a mu- month on the mountain or whatever felt really good but i i'm also being being told, guided, and uh, and higher self, you know, stepping right in, saying you have got to get the Ascension Essential series up, and you have got to get the Mastery Advanced series up and done. And if you could do it before September 21st, that'd be great. And I'm like, impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. I have, I have. Uh, it's just me. You know, I'm like, how am I supposed to do that? So so now I'm I'm opening up to okay if you want this to occur there's got to be some support there so just calling in the whole entourage going make make the folks show up you know make this it's going to take money and time and skills and 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 cooperation and I'm in a, a teeny weeny town that is full of of new age folks so um it's uh i'm I'm gonna do my best, but in the meantime, anyone who is not <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. we have whole wildfires here that are just wreaking havoc on on the vocal cords um anyone who is not a a way shower or not doing a new paradigm service, here is your open invitation to find the folks that you resonate with. Find the folks that that are providing or want to provide something brand new and find out what they need. Ask them. Do they need money? Do they need web people? Do they need technology? Do they need time? Do they need some folks to help out with certain aspects of, of getting people together? Go ahead and ask. A lot of times it isn't money. A lot of and and for me, you know, I'm I'm figuring out, you know, making deals, <laughs> winging it, on how to just, you know, have a, have a space that is uh, where I can just, you know, record all these webinars and stuff that I have coming up, and uh, and that still has access to the internet and it's, you know, somewhat quiet. So so I've I figured that out. I'm good for I'm good for September. However, when it comes to producing um, two different series of of online courses, um, the the kind of help that I need is with um, with the technology. You know, I can I can talk and guide and record. I have all the equipment, but when it comes to getting it online, posting it in a way that is um, accessible for everyone finding you know finding a way to to get all of this stuff together there's a lot of editing to do there's a lot of content to write there's a lot of you know all this recording but the back end stuff all that technology and how do I put it on my website I have no idea you know and then you're like linking to all these these separate pieces and everything it would be beautiful if it was clean and and coordinated and easy for people to access no matter what kind of computer or what kind of flash drive they had installed or whatever on their computer. That that part of it is is a good wow, how how many hours is that trying to figure that out? You know, I rather focus on content. But regardless of 
of what the way showers have to share or where the mission is going, there seems to be just and I'm just going to speak for 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 me. There seems to be an urgency to get a lot of the wisdom that's been acquired and the teachings that have been coming through online and kind of on autopilot because there's a a, a change occurring with this gateway. And it's it's not everybody, of course, but there are, there are certain things that you get asked to do to um, speed up and 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 further this this consciousness, and that the and you can't be distracted by um, by by what we've been doing. That there's definitely changes. Some of it is very simplistic. Some of it is stepping away altogether. But there is n- no way in heck that I'm just going to like shut down my website and disappear completely because that doesn't help anybody. So w- when it comes to the gateway, and just because we've got about 15 minutes left, so I want to get into the gateway. In the next few weeks, the instant manifestation will be revealed to some on the ascension path in a very clear way. That is, the the delay between thought and manifestation becomes non-existent. All of a sudden, there is no delay, because this is the way we've been creating our lives, collectively and individually, is through our thoughts, and we all know that. It's just that there's been kind of a delay between what you think and what shows up in your life. And as we as we get these little glimpses of zero point, which has technically um, we reach zero point on the 11, 11, 11. And it's just a shadow of linear time that has kept us in a little bit of separation. That's why we all feel like the days are, are rushing by, your body's trying to adjust, you're trying to adjust to this um, unity consciousness that is stepping right in, that unity, that zero point. The shadow of linear time is is dissipating for a lot of people, and you start realizing once you get into that state of of the higher self coming right in and the unity consciousness, you realize, okay, don't touch things, you know, with trying to manipulate. Either you're trying to be in flow all the time and teaching ourselves that, okay, flow, flow, flow. And then uh, you start realizing that manifestation gets very instant. You see a lot of that in Mount Shasta. You mention someone's name and they walk through the door. You know, you ask for, or you have an idea, crosses your mind, and then the next thing, you know, the, the object or, or whatever is showing up right in your path. Um, so that delay collapses completely. And that's just a side effect of the time collapse and a side effect of this astral plane of consciousness, this fourth dimension, um, getting shallower and shallower as that fifth dimensional unity consciousness um, is revealed to us. Now, will it be everyone experiencing these glimpses of clarity, of of experiencing zero point? Again, it's not religion. This is a choice. So welcoming it in and preparing for that thought intention equals reality is wise if you want to experience that state of consciousness. Now, timeline mastery is this is this is definitely a lesson in pure intent and manifestation for the highest good of all concerned. Because what occurs is when you get that glimpse of what I'm seeing is when people get a glimpse of what that unity consciousness truly means and what that zero point really feels like that you become so hyper aware of your thoughts manifesting everything that uh, either one of two things will happen. Um, First, you'll be like, whoa, I totally can't handle that. Look at everything that I've created that I don't want to create. And and secondly, um, you may completely step into mastery and be like, okay, I understand. So now it's about keeping myself clear and only manifesting exactly what I want. 
And what you what you end up doing is retraining your brain to create neural pathways that, like I always say, you know what what fires together wires together when it comes to neurons. So you end up focusing your consciousness and your brain waves on whatever it is you want to be, whatever it is you want to create, whatever it is you want to uh, add to the world, to the collective consciousness. And because it is not just a matter of um, this kind of old paradigm uh, using the secret and the, and the power of attraction to get what you want, um, the unity consciousness supports uh, getting what everybody wants. You know, it's, it's highest good of all concerned and highest good of your own journey. So if you're trying to create something that has nothing to do with your journey, like if I, let's say I focused on, I really want to win the lottery. Wow, a million dollars would, would change everything. Let's say, you know, for, for some, you know, <laughs> BS example of, of manifestation that I actually tried to concentrate on that. Well, it's not, what is that going to bring me? Grief. Because it has nothing to do with my path. Now, just because I can, I know where I want to go and I know what I want to create and I know who I am now, that, that, gives me a much different perspective and a much different firing of those neurons and those pathways to assist the pineal pituitary complex and those new telepathic chakras to align with what I want to create. And if I get the experience of instant manifestation, uh, you can bet that I'm not going to try to manifest a pile of money. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the highest interest of all concerned, you know. So that's that's fine, you know. And, and people try to attach well, if, uh, you know, the the whole like, well, if I if I had the money, then I could do this and I could do that, and I would spend it for good or whatever. You're still focusing on money, something that has nothing to do with where we're going. So when it comes to highest interest of unity consciousness, which is what I'm focusing my journey on, that crystalline consciousness, I'm going to be creating experiences that give me that opportunity, that give me the opportunity to fully embody that more and more and more, show me, show me, show me. And it's not a matter of show me exactly this and I want it this way and it's got to be wrapped in, in Tiffany blue <laughs> or whatever. It's it's not about that. It's about leaving that flow open to this is what I would like to create and it's not about a physical manifestation of whatever, an apple. I You know, the, there's plenty of apples on the planet already. I'm good with it. Let's talk about manifesting a state of consciousness. Let's talk about moving into that pure intention of what it would, whatever, and this is just my path I'm sharing, whatever it is that your path is is pushing you to create, whatever your higher self is desiring, your soul always has that desire, like, oh, if, if he or she could just get past all of the, the BS of linear time and all of these constructs that we've been working with and see what is possible as we open up to that m you know my path focusing on crystalline consciousness doing whatever I can action wise to support that so that when the opportunity comes I'm not like I have to change everything you know I'm just taking micro movement actions or big broad steps toward what I feel is supportive of that state of feeling. And it's very much a feeling when it comes to manifestation. And I'll be defining uh, the difference between emotion and feeling on my, on my uh, webinar on Sunday. So I did manage to get all the space issues together and rescheduled the emotional clearing webinar from Saturday to Sunday. August 26th, and you can sign up, just go to my website, sandrawalter.com, you can sign up for that. Um, but but what I'm going to be defining is the difference between emotion and feeling and how to clear all of that old paradigm nonsense out of the way 
once and for all so that you're open to not only the, the activations available and the, the DNA getting a rewrite, but that you're free, finally free of all of the things that have occurred in the past that defined who you were. And now we're clearing that in an effective way, not just repressing it, clearing it and are now able to open ourselves up to the freedom of what is available in in this new reality that we are creating bit by bit, piece by piece, individual by individual. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to, to finally be ready for that. And and again, you know, the, the reason for uh creating the the series of of ascension basics and, and a more advanced level too is to make sure that we're every, everybody's ready and I don't have to worry about um wow I never shared this material or that material in a direct way. So so it's all up good, ready to go and people can tap into it anytime they like, um, for as long as the, the internet and my website um can stay up. When it comes to the, the gateway and those glimpses of zero point, um I I feel that it's important to understand how those higher frequencies of consciousness work and enable us and how available they are because for me the the gateway for for utilizing those internal and external portals uh that allow us to step fully into a fifth sixth dimensional consciousness and be transformed by that in order to come back and assist, kind of a, a walking between worlds kind of thing, but that that portal alignment uh, for me begins with the fall equinox in September and goes all the way through the spring equinox um, in March. So as as much focus as is put on the that kind of median of December 21st and the whole three days of darkness and everything like that. I feel like there are there are way showers on this path that will be able to experience a lahat of that walking in between in order to guide and show folks who, who desire that or who want some clarity on that exactly what it feels like, looks like, where it is, how to do it, all of that. Um, and it, it may, again, because of the, the little glitch in, in sharing a lot of the, the Wayshore material, um, it, it may take us a while to, to uh, get some of that information out there. But, again, if you stumble across a Wayshower who is talking about brand new stuff, not focusing on seven chakras you you better be at 15 or 22 and at least experiencing that new pinpoint of light that we're getting that's next to the pineal pituitary that opens up that telepathic um gateway and and a lot of you may be seeing that it's almost it looks almost like a sunspot where you you get it anytime you meditate it it presents but it uh you know first thing in the morning and you haven't looked at anything that that's light at all and you're like it's just flashing it's like it's like you you looked at a flash bulb or something and it's uh sometimes it's consistent sometimes it's just there you know and, and you blink and it's still there blink and it's still there so there's there's that new chakra opening up and it has a lot to do with the um the telepathic uh portals chakras opening up in in the palm of your hands in the high heart it's the the thymus and the thalamus working together. All, all of this stuff is starting to get integrated at a very uh, rapid pace right now. So if you're finding way showers that are talking about that and not talking about it in a you know thousand um, dollar you know one year class or <laughs> course or whatever, uh, it, it's got to be now, pretty much. You know, it's it's like yeah, if you're if you're experiencing that, 
and you you want to know what to do with it, you don't want to sign up for some pricey six month course. My God, it'll be it, you, it'll be over and revealed and done with by then. Um, so this is we're kind of moving out of the the prediction taking a long time level one, level two, level three, all that stuff, and moving into a, a much faster way of um, getting this stuff out there because there's a whole layer of people that are ready for it. And that's the beautiful part is that we have this whole level of people that are are going to be way showers, but they just don't realize it just yet. Uh, you know, they're, they're still waiting for their mission or waiting for their skills or whatever. It's like you, you guys are already there. You're ready. You're open. You're willing but there's there's got to be a cooperation between the folks who are ready, willing, and able and the folks who are, I've, I've got the stuff I want to get out there. There's got to be some kind of cooperation so that we can transcend that new age paradigm of uh, slowly releasing information so that I can make as much money as possible and, and I'm not saying that everybody in the New Age is doing that. Certain, there are a lot of modalities that are helping people, but there has to be progress. There's a big call to getting out of these, you know, long marketing emails and long, you know, strategies. It's the, the strategy thing has has got to go. There's got to be something new. And this is something that has been has been put on my plate since the beginning of the year and even uh, conversations that I had last January with um, with with both Maureen Moss from, from World Puja and, and Susan Carroll from Multidimensions.com uh, you know both of them saying you know you're probably going to be the one to figure it out and here it is end of August and I'm like Okay, it's you know I've I've had a very challenging 2012 um, with with all the, the moving around and and trying to do things and then you know wild experiences and wanting to, to wanting to focus a, a lot more on my own personal journey through this sacred year and yet constantly being guided to it's it's you know to spend spend a, a night on the mountain here and there. And we'll give you everything that that you need. You know, you're not going to lose out. You know, it's much. It's similar to um, to Susan's dream that she had earlier in the year of helping people on the ascension train, and all of a sudden the the ascension train is leaving, and you're like, damn, I've been helping everybody on the train. Where, where I, I forgot to get on the train myself. You know, so I, I realized that early in the year, I was like, you, you know, a divine guidance needs to um, step it up when I do have time to do that. However, when it comes to moving quickly into this new information and this new knowledge, we're really breaking away from waiting on the the channel or whatever to tell us what's what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and and we're really just kind of finally seizing the reins and and steering that that uh, chariot exactly where we want it to go. And it becomes very individual, and it becomes very clear that a lot of us are going to have the experience of being faced with exactly what we are creating each moment. So don't let it make you bonkers. Don't let it, you know, if it if it starts presenting to you, and all of a sudden you're in that state of whether it's a glimpse or a day, an hour, a minute. Of, of getting that pure zero point awakening, um, don't freak out. You know, there's all, all is well. You know, you can't do anything wrong. Whatever is your path is your path. And if your your path involves I can't handle it, that's fine. You know, it'll present later down the line. You know, your your soul and your higher self are just throwing this stuff in there because they you know. Everybody wants the highest, greatest experience, right? When it comes to soul, higher self level, that's been the whole point. So it'll get thrown in there, and if you're not ready for it, or you walk right over it, or you ignore it, or get scared or whatever, um, it'll it'll come back. We don't know when, or maybe it changes the you know your your timeline, your course, 
gets uh, a little diverse for a while, and that's fine. You know, we're not talking about survival anymore. We're not talking about a complete attachment to the body vehicle. Body vehicle is doing a fantastic job of balancing everything right now when it comes to uh, these these upcoming gateways and these little glimpses into zero point. Go ahead and play with it. There's there's nothing wrong with anything that you experience, and as we start to transcend that that new age way of thinking where it's you know my way or the highway and you have to do this you have to do that you have to focus on your merkaba otherwise you're going to die you have to get on the ship otherwise you're going to die you have to you know go to inner earth otherwise you're going to die you have to learn how to do this otherwise you're going to die um i think we're done with that you know it it depends on on where you are in your journey but i'm pretty sure that a lot of folks listening in to uh this broadcast have stepped away from that whole uh, do this or else, especially when it comes to ascension and going through this this shift in consciousness. Um, I do not believe that anyone has a clear and direct truth when it comes to how this shift will be experienced for everyone. I do not resonate with everybody has to or else. I do not resonate with and then we will all fill in the blank. I think it becomes very individual at this point and very um, conscious. When we talk about a shift in consciousness, there are people who are ready for it and there are people who aren't. It doesn't matter if you're ready for it or not. If you want to sleepwalk through the entire shift, so be it. If you want to focus on the 3D stuff and be frustrated and angry, so be it. If you want to learn unity consciousness, if you want to be one of the first people who gets to experience that and 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 does it because you want to assist, because you want to be of service, not because you want to survive, not because you want your body vehicle to remain intact uh, forever, you know, if you have the right intention behind it, then go ahead and explore that. It's available. It is absolutely available. And there are there are certain way showers who are emphasizing that right now in their work, going, Okay, I think we're done with all the new age hoo ha. Let's move directly into new paradigm. We know it exists, we know how to move move toward it, but let's not dilly dally and get distracted and we really need to make time for exactly what it is we want to create because everything else that we're making time for that has nothing to do with what we don't want um that that has nothing to do with what we want why why are we doing that why why are we still existing there yeah there's there's a little bit of survival mode when it comes to you know paying paying the rents and things like that but that should not be our primary focus at this point if we want to be some of the way showers who get to experience full on crystalline consciousness what that means what it feels like embody it and then be able to teach and share that um which which i'm sensing that the the full integration of that consciousness will take away any of that lower level, lower consciousness um, survival stuff altogether. Um, certainly being able to, to manifest things instantly uh, would be helpful when it comes to the survival levels, but um, that, that should not be the focus. That should not be the intention going into this is not about, I would love everything to be taken care of for me. It's more about... I would love to show everyone how to take care of themselves and how to take care of each other at the same time. So this idea of no separation becomes uh, beautiful. I mean, that that is brilliant, radiant. The amount of abundance and prosperity that is our birthright, we've heard this over and over again. Um, 
instead of waiting for it to move toward us, let's move toward it and kind of transcend this old way of thinking and move directly into the new paradigm and co-create, co-create this. You have something that can assist. You have something, everybody has something that is their own piece of, of this unified puzzle that we are putting together right now. But uh, I think the key is not to wait for it. Um, I, I dropped off Facebook uh, this week because, um, or last week rather, uh, because it seemed to consistently be emphasizing that third dimensional state of uh non-action, feeling like action, <laughs> you know, like reposting and sharing and commenting on things um, is not action. It doesn't, that's not moving in a direction of of creation. You know, you can, you can share what you've discovered as much as you want, but when it comes to actually taking action, it seems like more people were thinking that, or more people are thinking that they're taking action just by looking at stuff or sharing stuff or talking about stuff than actually doing something. And it, it feels like the, the amount of time that needs to be spent on consciousness, on focusing our, our and developing our higher consciousness, that time is much more valuable than anything that, um, that social media has to offer, that's for sure. But... Uh, it it needs to be our focus right now. So as we kind of unplug from uh, certain things that are just a, a complete waste of time, there there becomes more space. You know, we we start showing our higher levels. We start showing our creator levels and our manifest levels that we are ready to step into that. And you could always go back and, and tell your friends about it later if you have to, you know. But but unless you have something pure and, and, and genuine to share, um and and I found that, that Facebook definitely was not the platform for my work anymore. It um it, it seemed to be just completely either being uh distorted, ignored, pushed aside, pushed back, you know, all all the comments and everything. Um, and I was like, okay, well, this just is not the platform for, for what I'm talking about. So let's just step away from that. And anybody who, who cannot remember <laughs> how to get a hold of me by SandraWalter.com, if you don't know my name, you're probably not my friend anyway. <laughs> so so let's you know leave all that behind. But, um, but when it comes to uh, connecting with people, it's, there, there's, we're, we're, we're in a training period right now. And learning telepathy, learning a, a collective consciousness, unity consciousness, uh, can it, it, that kind of training is not supported by something as third dimensional as as social media or some of the new age old paradigm uh, modalities or services any longer. So if if anyone wants to uh, work with me or work with a, a way shower who is attempting to transcend out of those old familiar ways that that people feel comfortable with as far as how they access information and find new information on the internet, um, go ahead and, and support that process with them because you then become that way shower, you know, what What do you do? I mean, it's this isn't about, you know, waiting until you can channel. I mean, we're transcending channeling altogether. This isn't about waiting until you are fully connected, fully activated before you participate. You are already participating in the collective consciousness every moment. No matter what level of consciousness you are resonating with, you are agreeing to a certain kind of reality. And if that reality includes waiting, then we have a whole level of people waiting for the shift rather than creating it. I know I say that a lot, but it's good to emphasize. 
So if you have any kind of skill whatsoever and you resonate with somebody who uh, appears to want to to move on, to move ahead, um, it's it would be helpful. As m- many of of the way showers go, you know what? I'm I'm not resonating with the internet and its structure anymore. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of people going. You you can't leave. <laughs> you know that that's how we get all our information. It's like oh, we're trying to teach you how to get information from different sources. So we're yeah, there's still the internet, but if we want to move into a wider and wider perspective, um, we have to create tools that work. And do we know what that looks like? No. Do we know what that feels like? Yeah, a lot of us do. We know what it feels like, but we don't know how to create it. You know, I'm not a technical person. I, I certainly um, can can explore that and have the most wonderful, geeky conversations about technology and consciousness and, and, and quantum physics with a lot of different people, but translating it into something that uh, the, the average awakened person can stumble across on the Internet is, is a different story altogether. Certainly don't have time to do that with everything else that's going on. So if you're one of those people that feels you have that kind of intuition and that kind of skill to support that, um, dig in, you know, go call RISA, call me, call anybody who is moving into that. And even uh, Susan Carroll is trying to teach fifth dimensional leadership where you get into a very multidimensional way of approaching everything because we're already there. And as the old reality collapses, uh, the new reality uh, it should be explored by everybody and instead of waiting for it, for it to occur. So, uh, so everybody get on board, whatever, whatever fragment of, of this, uh, Process that you would you would like to assist with, and uh, go ahead and do it. I urge you to do that. And uh, because of the time restraints of um, of uh, the upcoming work in September, uh, next week Wednesday will be my last um, weekly radio broadcast, and. After that, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they'll just get shorter. They certainly won't be um, weekly anymore because it does take um, a lot to put the show together and record it and post it and spread it around and all that other stuff that I I just don't have time to do and I want to focus on other things and the other things are not going to get done if I um, continue to, you know, have these conversations uh, every week on my own. So um, it's going to change into something else. I'm not saying it's going away completely, uh, but we're going to have to see. So everybody's just going to have to be flexible as we move into September because there's a lot of new things coming down the pipe, and we want to make sure that we are uh, allowing for that. And I'm certainly not going to stick to a one-hour weekly radio broadcast of of advice um, just because I've been doing it all, all this year. You know, there's a time where it's like, yeah, okay, it's starting to get into um, uh, a time where I just, I I won't be able to have time for that. So, uh, so that's that. Okay. And, uh, and if anybody else wants to, feels like, oh, but the weekly radio broadcast is all the Ascension guidance that I have and need and can afford, then uh, step up, contact me, and, um, figure out what you can do to make that easier and to make that happen. Enough said. There we go. All right. In the meantime, uh, we have a a little energy amplifier coming tomorrow on the 23rd. Um, So pay attention to that. See how you feel. Feel into it. See if it provides anything for you. Um, If you are willing to do the (laughs) emotional clearing webinar um, with me. My webinars always contain way more information than they should, but it'll be two hours of of, um, 
of very clear, very guided assistance and clearing. We're going to work with everybody and uh, get the stuff out of the way so that our DNA opens up, our path opens up. We don't have all this subconscious stuff um, ruling our journey uh, any longer. Time to let it go. So go ahead and, and sign up for that. It's on Sunday on the 26th. Um, the registration will be open uh, until I hit uh, like 200 people or something is, is the limit. So go ahead and, and sign up for that. Just go to my website, SandraWalter.com, and the link is in the description for the radio show. And that's it. That's it for this week. I hope you all have a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com. Thank you.